Thank you, members of the tribunal and everybody else here. See, one thing you must, we must realize about both Himanshu's case as well as uh, Zakia Jafri case, judgments. Both those judgments came before anyone was tried and convicted or acquitted. Okay. There has been, I mean, this is a all, I can understand a judgment coming which says at the end of a trial, after things have been tested in cross-examination, in examination chief, documents are presented, that somebody deliberately tried to do this, somebody deliberately tried to do that. Here we are faced with a situation where before even a trial begins, okay, before even a even trial starts or before even a trial is allowed to start, okay, people have been targeted, people have been, okay. Uh, before even the trial starts, people have been targeted in the sense that they have been, I mean, because of the actions of the Supreme Court, two people are already in jail, others are in queue, I guess. They might be not at all scared, but the fact of the matter is that they are in the queue. Uh, so th that's the reality. As far as uh, uh, the merits of the case are, because I believe the Supreme Court judgment in Zakia Jafri is wrong on both the counts. First, it is wrong on merits, which Nizam has already explained, so I will not go into it. And second thing is, it is wrong also in making observations against uh, uh, Tista, Shri Kumar and others. Okay? Uh, which basically dismisses their entire virtually like for t it's like dismissing her entire life's work. You know, for 20 years she has been, and uh, if only they knew that uh, she had, I mean, I, I know that because I was there in, uh, in Gujarat uh, from 2nd March uh, 2002 onwards. t was also there. That we were not working in air-conditioned cabins uh, as uh, the judges seem to suggest. Okay. They, there was huge amount of groundwork done, okay. huge amount of, uh, uh, you know, uh, going to the areas, staying, staying in the camps okay, for days together in order to uh, understand what the problems of the people were. So that's one thing. But the other thing which I think we need to look at is the Supreme Court keeps on saying that uh, the pot has been kept boiling for 16 years. 2006 was the complaint, 2022 is the judgment, so the pot has been kept boiling for 16 years. But we must remember what happened in Gujarat. 27th February of 2002, the Gudra massacre took place, and immediately on that day in the evening, the Massacre of the Muslim starts. On, 20, on 28th, the uh, events which uh, Tanvir described happen, not just in uh, Gulbarg society, but in various other places across Gujarat. Okay. And on 1st of March 2002, the National Human Rights Commission takes Suomoto action. In three days, they realize what is happening is really very sad. National Human Rights Commission, at that time, before the legislative uh, manipulation came, was presided over by a chief justice of a retired chief justice of the Supreme Court, okay? uh, and had also other Supreme Court judges as members. Okay? They take Suomoto action on first of March. Okay? In March itself, they visit. The chairman, that is the retired Supreme Court judge, Chief Justice, visits uh, Gujarat for three or four days, meets people, goes to camps, meets people, makes a report. And in that very report, he says that the law and order has completely collapsed. Okay. This is the NHRC's report. Before anybody came in, before, uh, you know, uh, uh, Zakia Jafri complaint came or anything of that sort. NHRC makes a report, this is what has happened. Okay. Again in May they file a second report saying that the FIRs 
the police are botching up the FIRs deliberately and you need to change all the executive officers. They make a recommendation. They say the camps facilities are very bad. They say that the hate speeches which are going on are very vitriolic. This is what the NHRC says by May 22 in their own reports. The pot was already heating up then and by the NHR, by, by a retired Supreme Court Chief Justice. Please understand that. Pot doesn't start boiling in 2006. In 2003, NHRC, in one of its rare moments, goes to the Supreme Court, files a petition. Two petitions are filed. One petition is in respect of Zahira Sheikh, best bakery case. Where NHRC says very categorically, uh, where NHRC, NHRC says that, look, that case has collapsed because of the kind of atmosphere which exists in Gujarat today. Obviously, who is responsible for that atmosphere? We all know. Okay? So, because of the kind of atmosphere, in 2003, they filed a case saying that Zakia, uh, Zahira Sheikh's case, where everybody has already been acquitted, should be retried and should be transferred outside uh, Gujarat. NHRC files a petition. After that, Zahira also files, uh, Zahira and Tisra file a petition, but so NHRC takes the lead in this. In that petition, the Supreme Court comes to the conclusion that yes, the situation in Gujarat is not something by which we can allow The trial to go on in Gujarat, a retrial has to be conducted, it has to be moved out of Gujarat. Why did the Supreme Court say that in 2003, if everything was hunky-dory as the Supreme Court now seems to be suggesting? So in 2003, this happens. 2003 itself, and this is important, before the matter, I mean when the matter was pending in High Court, an appeal in respect of Best Bakery was going on in the Gujarat High Court. Gujarat High Court, while deciding that appeal, makes an observation that Tista Satalwad and Mihir Desai, that is me, are anti-national people. It's a statement in the judgment, okay, are anti-national people and should not be tolerated. You know, this is an observation made in the judgment in 2003. We challenge it in the Supreme Court and it's a reported judgment of the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court says that without giving an opportunity of hearing to these people, under what provision of law you are making remarks against these people? And they strike down these remarks. And now see what happens now, in 2022. Okay. Shri Kumar is not before the Supreme Court. Tisra uh, is before the Supreme Court. But Supreme Court in its para number two says that we are not deciding on the locus of Tista. We will treat this as an appeal only by Zakia and not by Tista. Okay. So technically, Tista is also not before the Supreme Court. Okay. On what basis does the Supreme Court then, which gave an order in 2003 saying that nobody, you can't castigate people who are not present before you without giving them an opportunity of uh, being heard as to why you are castigating them. On what basis is the Supreme Court doing it today? That's, that's a question which, uh, uh, which is very important. Again, in 2000, uh, 2004, or towards the end of 2003, National Human Rights Commission, now presided over by another retired Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, files a petition in the Supreme Court saying that Gujarat situation and they are doing reports from time to time. They have appointed a special reporter saying that the Gujarat situation is bad. There are eight trials which are very, very important, which included Gulbarg, Naroda Patia, Naroda Gam, Gojara, etc., etc., various trials which are very important and those trials should be shifted out of Gujarat. This is what the NHRC is saying. In 2003 and 4, Supreme Court recognizes what the NHRC is saying and stays all these trials. The pot was, at, uh, I mean, was already boiling by that time. 2003, the Supreme Court 
on recognition of the of the of the uh, of the of the picture brought before it by nhrc says that these trials have to be stayed because things are compromised in Supra, in in gujarat at various levels from top to down this one of the observations where it was where people remember that uh, when gujarat was burning the needles uh, were fiddling you know that 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 observation comes in the judgment okay in a reported judgment next this is what happens in 2003 in the meanwhile in the meanwhile in 2002 okay the the elections are due in gujarat okay? elections are due in gujarat in 2002 and at that time the election commission makes a visit to see if the situation is ripe for having elections fair and free elections in gujarat or not the gujarat government makes a very strong case that the situation is ripe for having elections there is one officer who files a report before the election commission saying that no the situation is not ripe this officer was shri kumar okay. in 2003 what does the supreme court say in its judgment that in 2005 after he was denied promotion he starts talking no in 2003 the uh, 2002 the election commission's report discloses that shri kumar has filed this report it's an open uh, decision it's not something uh, it's not a sealed cover procedure okay. shri kumar files various reports okay. before and he was the uh, joint director of police intelligence at that time additional director of police intelligence intelligence at that time he files he files reports repeatedly with the government saying that look i mean things are i mean let us allow me to take action against the newspapers allow me to do this allow me to do that, that nothing okay. nothing okay. so what do you do okay. he give, and then he goes before nanavati commission files affidavits he is told that unless he withdraws what he is doing before the Nanavati Commission. He gets a notice in 2004. Where unless he withdraws what is going on before the Nanavati Commission, we are starting an inquiry against you about how you were appointed in 1999 as a, joint, as a, as a director general. This was a notice issued to him before. I mean, this is after what he does. Then, of course, he is not granted promotion. He continues filing affidavits. Supreme Court says that, oh, Shri Kumar filed affidavits only after he was denied promotion. Without recognizing the fact that he was denied promotion because he filed affidavits. Because he filed reports. Right? This is the reality of, I, and, and so, while we talk about t stuff, we should not forget about Shri Kumar, who I, I, I know Shri Kumar from about 10-15 uh, years, an excellent officer, of total integrity, total dedication to his work, okay. will not do a wrong thing, is not residing in some fleshy house, he, he has his own house, uh, and right now of course he's in jail, but uh, that, that's, that's the situation. So this is how his, and this is the basis on which he's now in jail. And the, and the order which rejects his bail, by the Sessions Court order, says, very, says one thing, that he dared to file affidavit against the government. Okay. Therefore, his bail has to be denied. Okay. This, is, this is the level at which we are, we are. Coming back to my chronology. So now, by 2006, you have the affidavits of uh, Shri Kumar, which depicts how things were happening, and by by the intelligence head, okay, depicting how things were happening, and how there was a clear case of conspiracy, how everybody was, you know, uh, hand in gloves with each other in doing this at at the top level. There is also a People's Tribunal which is set up, okay, presided over by Justice uh, Shri Krishna. Justice Savant, Justice Suresh, Justice Savant was a retired judge of the Supreme Court, Justice Suresh, retired judge of Bombay High Court. T. 
Batista was a secretary of that. I was also part of that. One day when we were sitting in, in an office in uh, uh, Ahmedabad discussing what to do, we get a call. The call is from Haren Pandya, who was then, then a minister in the Modi government. Haren Pandya tells us that we, I want to talk to you people, but I'll talk confidentially, nothing should be disclosed. Okay? So I'll meet you at a given place, come and meet you. So four of us were there, Harin Pandya comes. Harin Pandya tells us that look, on 27th February 2002, a meeting took place in Mr. Modi's house, where Mr. Modi gave these instructions that let Hindus vent their feelings, police should not interfere. Okay, for three days. Okay. He was a minister. And he discloses this. He tells us, don't tell it to anybody. Uh, I mean, don't disclose my name. You can say this, the meeting took place, but don't disclose my name because I am a minister and I am fearing for uh, rep uh, reprisals. We don't disclose the name, but somehow, and, and Shri Kumar says in his affidavits that I was asked to track the movement of Harin Pandya. Six months later, Harin Pandya gets killed. Okay. Uh, Okay, now how, when, there, there, there are a lot of versions to it, I, I won't go into that. Now, this fact also came before us. Uh, so in 2006, there was a lot of material available by then, that what happened say in Gulbarg, what happened in Naroda, what happened in some other place, was not just a spontaneous outburst because of what happened in Gujarat. It was much more pre-planned kind of an either inaction, deliberate inaction, okay, or deliberate action. It is in that context that in 2006 a complaint came to be filed by Zakia Jafri, okay, saying that look, I mean, while you are going into Gulberg, this, that, and the other, do not ignore. Uh, Kavita, tell me when to stop. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Uh, do not, uh, do not ignore. Uh, I mean, uh, while there may be sp uh, sp uh, there may be some spontaneity here, spontaneity there. It was something which was a deliberate plan at a larger level. There were hate speeches. There were various other things. So do not only confine your investigation to individual cases. Look at the larger conspiracy, the larger interaction. That was what the complaint was about in 2006. She goes to the High Court because, the, because her complaint is not acted upon by the police authorities. High Court rejects the petition and she manages to reach the Supreme Court then. Because that's a legal procedure available within our hierarchy. You go to the High Court, High Court rejects, you go to Supreme Court. That's what she did. In the meanwhile, those seven trials, eight trials, which had been stayed by the Supreme Court in 2003, which I told you, come up for hearing in 2008. And at that time, the Supreme Court says that, look, we are not transferring these trials outside Gujarat, but we will not allow the Gujarat police to investigate this. We will not allow their, 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 their special PPs chosen by them to uh, try these cases. We will appoint instead a special investigating team. So even in 2008, please understand this. The Supreme Court is not trusting the Gujarat police. The tr Supreme Court is not trusting the prosecutors who are supposedly ele uh, selected after an advertisement and interview and all that. Okay. The Supreme Court is not trusting any of this. Even in 2008, the pot is boiling already. Okay. We have not started boiling the pot. NHRC did it, Supreme Court has been, con and remember one thing, this, and then, then the Supreme Court says the same SIT will also look into uh, Zakia Jafri's complaint. Okay? Supreme Court says that. Finally, and, and, and uh, uh, please remember that uh, SIT case, the NHRC case of 2003, yeah, came to an end in 2018, okay, in the Supreme Court. It took 15 years for the Supreme Court to decide that case. 
2018 it was finally disposed of. Anyway, Zakia Jafri's complaint carries on. Finally, the investigating agency SIT says we have completed the investigation. We are uh, so the court says okay. Now you have to go back to the magistrate, and court specifically says in its order that if you are dropping any of the 63 accused from this. And one of the 63 were accused was Mr. Modi, and then, then there are various other, uh, other accused who were named in that complaint. If you are dropping any of these accused from your charge sheet, you must give notice to Zakia Jafri and hear her. This is Supreme Court's order in 2011. So they drop all the accused, forget one. Okay. So they drop all the accused. Now, when they drop all the accused, obviously they give notice to Zakia Jafri. Why? Not because she is jumping at it, up and down to come and intervene. Supreme Court has said you must give notice. Okay. We haven't, I mean, the Supreme Court's order. So we are just complying with Supreme Court's order by going there and filing. And the normal method of opposing a closure petition is by filing a protest petition. So we file a protest petition, which is rejected. We go to High Court, rejected. We go to Supreme Court. Where is the, I mean, all this? What has she been charged with? She has been basically charged with using, effectively, using the judicial process. Okay? Asking for what? Asking not that anybody be convicted. Asking that a trial should take place. Please conduct a trial to decide whether somebody is guilty or not. Not asking any of the courts to say, declare somebody as guilty. Asking them, just, 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 find, just find out, just hold a trial, decide whether somebody is guilty or not. They may be, may not be, fine. That's all that was asked for. Okay. Rejected and then this order comes. So remember one thing. Tista Satilwad has faced the wrath of Gujarat government since, since of course 2002-03, but um, more so since 2010-11. Repeatedly cases were filed against her, okay, in Gujarat. There are at least six anticipatory bail orders which we had to get. Some cases were in respect of the cases which were going on. One case was in respect of FCRA, uh, her organization receives FCRA, received, now it's of course cancelled and, and they were trying to arrest her for that. One case was in respect of Gulberg Society. Mein. There was a, there was a, uh, at one point of time, it was thought that Gulberg Society, nobody is going back to stay. Okay, because people were scared and it was burnt. It is burnt. So let's convert it into a museum of memory. That was what was thought. That we'll convert it into a museum of, of, of memory. And donations were sought, officially. The donations which came at that point of time, for whatever reason, it was not pushed hard, about 25,000 or uh, 50,000 or something like which came. Obviously, that money was not enough to start a museum. So the person who had donated the money, uh, CJP wrote saying that, look, I mean, it's not possible to start the museum, so we are willing to refund your money. The donor writes back saying that, please use it for some other cause. So an FIR is lodged against her saying that you misguided people into museum, this, that and the other and they tried to arrest her for that, anticipatory bill is there. So today the situation is that Tista Satilwad, a person from the non-governmental organization, civil society, human rights activists and Shri Kumar, Sanju Bhatt was already in jail and Shri Kumar, who was a whistleblower, who was coming and telling ex exactly what is happening in the government. Okay. Both are in jail. Their bails have been rejected by the Sessions Court. There is no case against them. But of course, that really doesn't matter nowadays whether there is case against you or not for bail to be rejected or granted. So, so that's, that's the situation which exists today. Okay. And I am sorry to say that uh, the way things are happening right now in Supreme Court, okay, uh, 
uh, we are in for really bad times and when supreme court says something the message goes down it's not as if uh, you know uh, uh, supreme court says something and it remains there in a particular case only they said something it doesn't work like that the message goes down and that is what is happening right now here okay uh, that is going to happen right now we of course have to continue our battle we have to continue to fight and uh, hopefully uh, himanshu and others will never be put in jail and uh, tista and shri kumar will be out of jail very soon uh, but that's not the end of the battle that's just the beginning of the battle thank you very much